Hey, this is Eddie Hale coming to you by request. Miss Rachel from my web design class wants to know how to make the orange banner shown on lesson seven in my Illustrator class. Here's how I did it. Here we are in Illustrator. I'm going to hit Command U to turn on my smart guides so that I can tell I'm right on the center of the circle and I'm going to drag straight to the right. I'm going to hold the shift key so that my my direction handles move straight to the right. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And then I'm going to come out here a little ways and drag down and describe a beautiful arc right there. I don't want, I want it to change to a flat straight side now. So I'm going to click on that last anchor point to get rid of the direction handle. Come down here and click again. I'm going to drag now to pull a direction handle out of there. Move back to the center of my shape and drag perfectly horizontally. So there's my half a banner. I'm going to look at the banner that should be there to see if it's close. It's close, I think it needs to be thicker. I'll adjust it with my white selection arrow. I'm liking that, that's looking like half a banner. I'm going to switch back to my pen tool and draw the rest of that shape. These little shapes down there. I'll start by clicking this little triangular shape. Send that backwards, command left bracket. It describes where my kind of a fold in my banner that I'll click here. Actually, I'll, I'll click here and then I'll, I will drag here to add that last little piece that's kind of curved again. Click to get rid of that direction handle. Click up here, drag out again, and then drag back here. Click to get that rid of that direction handle. Click right there. And I want that to be that color. I'm going to send it backwards. Command left bracket, send it backwards. And again, I can adjust it with my arrow tool. Oh, that's beautiful. There is an issue though. These weird points sticking out here, those are no good. So I'm going to um, do a trick. I'm going to select click, shift click on all these pieces, and in my stroke panel, I am going to tell it to have round joins. So anywhere there's a corner, it's going to be round now instead of pointy. And that's an Illustrator trick. Not Adobe Illustrator, but I mean like a people who draw illustrations trick to make those joins look better. Now I wanna flip this over the center point. Again, I'm going to shift click on these halves, and I'm going to do this trick with the Reflect tool. The Reflect tool is hidden under the Rotate tool. I'm going to select that. I'm going to put my cursor right on um, the center of the ribbon. And I'm going to hold the Option key and click. Hold the Option key. It will bring up this panel. And now I can tell it to flip over the horizontal axis and to flip a copy. So I click Copy, and there it flips my ribbon over there. Isn't that beautiful? It is beautiful, except I really want it to be one piece. I don't want it to be split in half here in the middle. So I'm going to join those pieces. I want to I want to mark key in that anchor point right there, and it's going to be difficult with this green circle here. So I'm going to click on the green circle. I can tell I've selected it. And I'm going to go to Object Hide Selection. And the green circle will go away. Now I can switch to my white arrow and draw a tiny marquee around that top anchor point. I've actually got two anchor points, the one from this side and one from this side over here. And then I'm going to go to Object, Path, Join. And because those anchor points are, are right on top of each other, it'll join into one anchor point. I can prove it. See, I grab it, pull it away, and it's one anchor point. Down here, I've got two anchor points right on top of each other again. Command-Z. I'll marquee those in. Object, Path, Join. And now those or one anchor point there. I want to bring that green shape back. I'm going to go to Object Show All. There's my green ellipse. Um, I need to select all these parts again and fill them with the correct orange color from the handout. Zero cyan, 75 magenta, 100 yellow, and zero black. 75 and 100. 75, 100. There's my orange color. The stroke should be white. Ah, beautiful. Now 
I need to set the type on there, what I'm going to do is click on this anchor point here. And if I copy and paste that, edit, copy, edit, paste, I get that arc, a perfect replica of that arc. I can move this around now and place it in here, and I can put my type on there. So I'll switch to my type tool. I'll switch to my type on a path tool just to be normal. Put my type tool on there, and in all caps, I type Western. I'm going to center that. That's really weird. I'm going to click on there. I need a different guide color. I'm going to switch my guide colors to light blue again. I need to pull this bar over here, this sidebar over, so that when I center it, it really is centered on there. Then I'm going to hit Command T to bring up my character panel. And it's Garamon. I'm going to highlight that and type GA, find my way to Garamond Pro, I think it's Garamond Pro Bold, it's bigger, but it um, it's also horizontally scaled, so I think it's something crazy, like 75% horizontal scaled. Looking at the handout, it looks real tall and thin. So I believe it's horizontal scaled even more, I think. This does not enhance readability. It's just for silly, special things like this. All right, so there's my type. I'm going to move it up there. And because I stole this curve from the bottom edge of my banner, the type does sort of seem to follow that curve. I'm going to change the fill on my type to white. So there I'm almost there. If you look at this though, there's a tiny little green drop shadow that I need to work out in my Illustrator file. I also probably need to spend about 20 minutes kerning this thing together just right, but I don't want to make you watch me doing that. So you go through and kern that stuff just right to get equal spacing between there. I'm going to show you the trick for the drop shadow. I'm going to copy this, edit, copy the type, and then I'm going to plan ahead. I'm going to make it filled with black now. So that's going to be my black drop shadow. Then I'm going to go to edit, paste in front. Now I have a white one right in front of the black one. I'm going to zoom way in on it and move the white one a little bit. And that's how I get that black drop shadow. When it comes to drop shadows, less is more. So don't go crazy and give me a big, ugly black drop shadow. It should be a thin, thin, very tasteful black drop shadow. So that's how you do the banner part of that root beer label. Oh, and you can see the essential beverage down here. That's, the, that's a similar thing. I copy and pasted this lower part of the path and set the type on, on a copy of that curve there so it followed the curve exactly. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.